The freshwater fish of North America are seldom thought as dangerous. And this is for good reason, as confirmed accounts of death or serious injury linked to these fish are very rare. But that being said, there are several accounts of a handful of species actually killing someone. The Gulf sturgeon is an anadromous species that comes in from the Gulf into freshwater rivers. Often when in these rivers, these sturgeon exhibit a spectacular jumping behavior. And while it's not certain why they do this, it's thought to be for communication to maintain group cohesion in murky waters. Also, perhaps it might be a way for the fish to control their swim bladder buoyancy by gulping air. Whatever the reason, these sturgeon often propel their 200 pound, six plus foot bodies far out into the water and into the open air. And while this behavior isn't aggressive in nature, there have been several instances of boaters being struck by these fish while traveling at high speeds. And getting hit by a fish of that size is comparable to getting hit by a truck. The most tragic case was in 2015 on the Sewanee River in Florida. A five-year-old girl was struck and killed by a jumping sturgeon while out on a boat with her family. Her mother and nine-year-old brother also sustained significant injuries from the collision with this fish but fortunately they were able to recover. There have been other instances, people being hit by these gulf sturgeon and sometimes being knocked unconscious, sometimes falling overboard and needing rescue. Blue and flathead catfish have been linked to several deaths in a much different way. Catfish noodling is a primitive, barehanded fishing method where people stick their arms or legs into underwater holes, often during the catfish spawn, to entice the bite of an aggressive catfish. When the fish latches on, they then quickly wrestle it out of the water. It's a risky but thrilling activity for some, especially for catching large flathead catfish. Both blue and flathead catfish can be over 4 feet long and weigh over 100 pounds. As you may imagine, a fight with a fish of that size may not always end well. There have been documented reports of people noodling for catfish and being pulled under and becoming stuck or disoriented, sometimes to the extent of drowning and death. So while these catfish have never directly killed someone from a bite, brunt force, etc., they have been indirectly linked to killing people by causing drowning. Now there are some marine species known to have killed humans such as the Atlantic stingray or the bull shark, and these are also capable of living in fresh water. However, I couldn't find any credible information that any of these deadly accidents ever occurred while the species was in fresh water. Every account listed seems to have taken place in a saltwater or marine environment. Instances of fish causing serious injury is much more common than actual death. For example, there are people every year that wind up in the hospital due to being struck by jumping silver carp. Now these fish aren't native to North America, but have been introduced and now thrive in the Mississippi Basin. Similar to the Gulf sturgeon, these fish will jump out of the water and strike boaters traveling at high speeds often causing facial fractures like broken noses, jaws, as well as concussions and dental injuries. When startled, silver carp jump high out of the water, often in huge numbers. This fish is much more abundant than the gulf sturgeon, so striking instances are much more common and widespread. Channel catfish aren't as big as blue and flathead catfish, and therefore they aren't attributed to as many noodling incidents. However, they are still capable of injuring people. I actually know of a story that nearly killed someone. Now, this story came from a friend of a friend, so I don't really know the exact legitimacy of all these details, but I do know that it actually happened to some extent. So as the story goes, there was a couple of teenagers fishing for channel catfish near Utah Lake, and they landed a medium-sized catfish. As one of the teens attempted to hold it, it wriggled and thrashed out of his grip, and as an effort to keep it from dropping, he then hugged it tight to his chest which resulted in one of the sharp pectoral spines piercing through his shirt and deep into his left breast. Essentially, the spine had pierced all the way to his heart, and removing the fish outside of the hospital may have opened the wound and killed him. He was rushed to the hospital where the wriggling catfish was still lodged in his chest, and there they were able to remove it safely. It was just a nightmare freak accident, but I do think of that story often when handling younger catfish with sharp spines. Some of the more toothy predators, like gar, pike, and muskie, are unlikely to cause any terrible harm, but they are very capable of sending you to the hospital to get stitches if handled improperly. Especially a fish as large as an alligator gar, which can be over 6 feet and weigh over 100 pounds. When a fish of that size begins to thrash around, it's no joke, especially when it has teeth. 
Some species like bullheads and mad toms are unlikely to send you to the hospital, but can inflict a really painful sting if they manage to pierce you with their venomous little dorsal and pectoral spines. The worst case scenario with this is if the wound got infected, but regardless, it hurts really bad. The intensity of the sting may vary, but I've had throbbing pain from a bullhead puncture for more than 24 hours, and it's just not a fun time. In the end, the vast majority of freshwater fish of North America are harmless, and injury very seldom occurs out of aggression of the fish. If you think I missed some dangerous fish, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear any stories you guys may have. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I hope to see you on the next one.